Hey guys, it's Robin, RSI and Crafts, and welcome to my craft room. Today I did a time lapse while quilting one of the baby quilts from last year, and I thought we'd just go ahead and do a little voiceover and chat about it as I'm going through. Now I am wearing a quilter's gloves. These gloves are from Fonz and Porter. I picked them up at Joann's. Oh, I probably bought those about 10 years. Even though I'm doing just a straight line quilting, I really like to use them to help hold the fabric. I'm actually putting pressure and holding my hands apart while stitching on it just to make sure everything stays nice and smooth. I do have it pin basted. I pin basted it through all the little squares. You might notice some of the pins popping up here and there. And I did that because I knew ahead of time I was going to be doing some straight line quilting inside of those black bars. I'm doing the quilting about an eighth of an inch on the inside. I'm using black thread on both the front and on the top and in the bobbin. I have a, a blue backing on it, so that's perfectly fine. I'm going to quilt on another one here in a second too, and I put white in the bobbin because of my backing fabric was white. So I just went all the way through, and as I was going through, doing my little straight line, I have it at about a 2.6 stitch length. You see how I have it rolled up into my throat plate? Now, I'm very blessed to have a nice, spacious throat plate. This machine is actually made for quilting, so there's plenty of room in there. These quilts are about 36 inches, 36 by 42-ish, so there's not really that much to get through, so it is nice. Then I just flip around, as I said, I'm doing the other side, so I'm, both of my quilting lines are within it. I have cotton batting. You might be able to notice that a lot of my edges are all off, like one side is nice and neat here, and then this side is all, it's all squiggly jiggly and nothing's going to line up. When we do a video next Friday, come on back and I'll show you how I trim that up and make the quilt all nice and even so that is ready for its binding. And I just keep on going. I, like I said, I give a little bit of pressure with my hands and just let it glide through. I could have put a walking foot on, but one, I didn't even think about it. And two, my machine does pretty good on its own just doing this type of straight line stitching. Sometimes I do like to put the walking foot on if I'm doing something really in depth or if I'm using a ruler or something like that. But for this thing, it just works out really nice. And I'm going to show you really quick because the time lapse is super fast. I don't remember how, oh look, my hands are dancing. Da, 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 da. I don't remember how long it took me to quilt them. It wasn't very long at all. Here comes the second quilt. But the time lapse only went to like 19 seconds. So I slowed it down as much as I can. Hi, she's waving. Okay, I'm showing you that there's three layers and I put some pins in it to baste it. I'm going to do the same thing on this one, but this time I'm starting in the center. And I'm going to work myself one way and then spin it around and work the other way. So it depends on where you're putting your straight lines. You can put some fancy stitches and just stitch straight down the center of that black bar and only do it once. And then you won't have to do both sides. You can go ahead and stitch down in the center of the squares. Now my batting allows me to stitch 10 inches apart for my quilting. So I know that I'm okay just going down like this. I believe, if I remember correctly, my strips are probably about four and a half or five inches wide. So the quilting that I'm putting on it is going to be perfectly fine. The cotton batting is going to make it crinkle up a little bit in the wash, and we'll see that after it gets washed in a few weeks. I'm going to go ahead and take you through probably at least trimming it up, and then we'll see if we go ahead and do the putting on the binding also. I know I've shown you a little bit on the binding in the past, but we can always do it again, right? Do a little machine binding on it. So that's really it. I just keep going down and down, one by one, little by little. You can do this with, a, I'm using all cotton for my little squares and stuff in here, but you can also do it with flannel. And that would make a really good use for your flannel scraps if you have any left over from making pajama pants or something like that for your family. Just try to be careful that the extra bits that are over into your throat plate that they don't, in your side of your machine there, that they don't get kind of curled up and come back in and you stitch them. I do try to keep an eye on them, make sure when I'm going down, I can see the, the, I can see the batting and I can see the fabric at the other side. So I just make sure none of it's gotten flipped back up as I'm going because I didn't trim off any of that extra. I do have a lot of extra batting and, and fabric all the way around it. I might have said binding, but I meant fabric. 
Yep, I just keep going and going and going. Sometimes I put my hand inside the extra and I just kind of give my hand a spin and that helps roll the fabric over there off to the side. It's on your left side, on my right side, but you guys know over in the throat plate area. And you just keep going and going. This is like the quickest and simplest way to make any type of a baby quilt to get it quilted up really quickly. It works really well with these black bars like this so that I can just easily go through and get that done. Too bad we can't all quilt this fast, right? I can even speed it up and make it much faster in a blink of an eye. Now that would be a great way to finish some quilts. But now that I've started getting this done, I'm really hoping to get more of these quilted this year. Some of them will go into the shop and some of them will be donated. The one you're looking at right here, this one is going to be donated. The first one that we did, which is pretty much the same design, just some different fabrics and backing, that one's going to go into the shop. I'm not sure yet where they're going to get donated to. It might just simply go to Project Linus. Or I want to see if there's some type of thing with our hospital or with some of the, um, the shelters for the women and children and stuff. For the, the women that, you know, they've been abused and they have their children with them and stuff like that. Or maybe a homeless shelter. I'm sure I can find something around here that would accept it once we get past everything that's going on right now. So I'm using the inside of my presser foot as my guideline to see where I'm going. You can go ahead and do a quarter of an inch on either side if you'd like and do it on the inside and use the side of your presser foot. That would work also. I did want to just leave all those colorful squares just plain. I didn't want to do any quilting in those. Plus this allows me to just do that straight black line stitching. I don't have to change my thread. I don't have to worry about anything. I can just zoom, zoom, zoom. I probably could even get away with, as I said, I could just do a fancy stitch down the center. I could have done just one stitch on the black, one line of quilting, but I think that would look a little bit weird. It's nice to have it going down both of them. Just wiggle that quilt on down. But I'm sure you can see how easy this would be for our beginner quilters or for those of you that are just starting out quilting your own quilts. Start with something that's a little bit smaller that can easily fit through your machine. Just kind of keep it all out of the way with your other one hand and help guide it through. So you just hold it all down and it's still putting a little pressure on it because I've pinned really well. I don't have to worry about any of the layers shifting too much so I can just deal with managing all of that. There we are. Now one of the things, now as you can see I didn't have any, okay I could not figure out how to delete that little, little uh, mix up of a blurb there, but I hope you guys have enjoyed this little video. I, as I said, I'm going to come back the next week and I'm going to show you how I trim up that really messy side. We have a couple of quilts here that we can go ahead and trim up. So if we need a little more practice, we can do it on both of them or we can just go ahead and do it on one. If you have any questions about the quilting or how I put it together or I basted it or anything like that, please leave them down in the comments. And thanks for hanging out with me today and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.